So in today's lesson, we're going to cover a application of the third kinematic equation, which is a little bit more simplified. Let's say you have a ball, and the ball is 2 meters above the floor, which is about 6.6 .6 feet. Then you just drop it. You don't throw it or toss it. You just drop it to the floor. On Earth, what is the velocity right before the ball hits the floor? That is going to be the problem we worked through today. To recap, there are five variables in kinematics. Displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. The first kinematic equation is V equals V naught plus AT where V equals final velocity, V naught equals initial velocity, acceleration is A, and T is time. And by the way, it might be useful to take notes because we're going to do a lot of math to basically find a way to find an answer to the, to the question that was asked in before. Uh, if you have a ball that's two meters above the ground, you drop it on Earth, how fast will the ball be moving right before it hits the floor? There's some implied knowledge in this problem. First of all, when you drop it, what is the initial velocity? It's zero. It begins at zero because you don't, because it does, because it has to. And that's only applies if you just drop it. Now, um, to recap, the five variables of kinematics, I'm going to label them D for displacement, V naught for initial velocity, V for final velocity, A, A for acceleration, and T for time. And we solved in the previous problem, previous lesson, that displacement equals V naught times T plus one half of AT squared. That's equation two. Equation 1 is V equals V naught plus AT. Now let's write down what we know from the problem, what variables we can assign numbers to. Distance equals displacement equals negative 2 meters. Now here's a question. Why did I say negative 2 meters? Signs matter in physics a great deal. And we decide to make the math easier that if something's going down, it's in the negative direction. And if it's going up, it's in the positive direction. So distance, displacement equals negative 2 meters because down is negative and the ball is going down. Initial velocity is 0 because you don't put any force on it. You just drop it. And when you just drop a ball, it begins at 0 and then it speeds up until it hits right before the floor. It has a final velocity. And you should learn. You should know this number from physics class. Acceleration on Earth equals negative nine point eight meters per second. Time we don't know, but it doesn't matter because we're going to derive a third kinematic equation where we don't need to know time. How do we do that? Well, let's examine what we know already. We know equation one has three variables in it. Initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Apologies, four variables. And equation two has one, two, three, four variables as well. Distance, initial velocity, time, and acceleration. So we're going to rewrite these equations so that we have T by itself. That's the technique we use. It takes some thinking to figure this out on your own. I had to do about two pages of work to figure out this is the way to do it. Because you can solve for t for equation 1, solve for t for equation 2, and set those two equations equal to each other. And the math works out so that you get a final velocity equaling some value. Now, again, I recommend writing this down. We will rewrite equation 1. V equals V naught plus AT. Question, what is V naught? Again, if we just drop a ball, V naught equals zero. So V in equation one equals acceleration times time. 
We solve for time. We get V divided by A equals T. That's equation one, the simpler one. Equation two, let's move on to that one. And I will have, and the picture you see on the video is my notes, uh, which I used in the final form, and I'm going through them right now to find the final answer. Equation two is displacement equals V naught T plus one half A T squared. Question again, what is V naught? Why it's zero. So what is V naught times T or V naught or zero times T? Anything times zero is zero. So we get displacement equals zero plus one half A T squared. Or displacement equals one half A T squared. We solve for t by first getting t in isolation, t squared in isolation on one side of the equation. And we do that by multiplying by 2 because I'll get rid of the 1 half factor and divided by a because I'll get rid of the a. So we get 2d divided by a equals t squared. We have t equals v divided by a and we have t squared equals 2d divided by a. We cannot set those two equal to each other because t squared does not always equal t and it rarely does. But there's a little trick we learned from um, earlier math classes where if you have the square of something, you can take the square root to find the original value. So 2d divided by a equals t squared. So t equals the square root of the entire value of 2d divided by a. Now we have t equals some value which we saw for equation one and we have t equals another value for equation two and we just set equation one now to equal equation two and you'll notice that when we do that we have v a and d we know a and we know d and we just need to solve for v now this is called like analyzing your equations um, I don't know the formal term, but it's kind of like um, paying attention to your work and the problem and the direction of your analysis so that you know you're not wasting your time going down a dead end. So time equals time, or V divided by A equals the square root of the entire value of 2 times displacement divided by A. I am going to square both sides now to get rid of the square root on the right side of the equation. So v squared over a squared equals 2d divided by a. I need to isolate v by itself. So first I will multiply the left side by a squared to cancel out the a squared on the bottom of the left side of the equation and multiply by a squared on the right as well. So I'm left with v squared equals 2d times a squared divided by a. Some more simplification. Um, if there's an a squared on top and an a on bottom, you do the um, exponent on top minus the exponent on bottom. Example is x squared divided by x equals x. Or like 5 squared divided by 5 equals 5. Or 3 squared divided by 3 equals 3. Or any value of, let's say we have 525 squared divided by 525. That equals 525. Because it's 525 times 525 divided by 525, and one of the units of 525 cancels on top, as well as on bottom, and you're left with 525 on top. In this specific case, it's 2 times d times a squared divided by a, simplified, is v squared equals 2 times a times d. And then you take the square root of both sides so that you find velocity final by itself. And that's velocity equals the square root of two times acceleration times distance. And you plug in your values. So velocity equals square root of the entire value of two times negative 9.8, one sometimes they'll have on the problems. I did nine, negative 9.8 in this case, times negative two. The neighbors cancel out, and you're left with something like, let's see, what is this? Something approximating 6 meters per second. No, that's wrong. 10, 40, 40 divided by, let's see now, 40 square root, 
let's do 13, 169. Sorry, I'm doing a little math. Um, I'm trying to do this properly. But I won't because we have calculators for that. And I don't want to waste your time with my mathematical mumblings. Key point. I set V naught to equal zero. You cannot always do that. You have to examine and speculate about the problem that is usually a word problem with words to see if the initial velocity is zero. If the initial velocity is zero or the final velocity is zero, it makes the math so much easier. If it's not, it gets really complicated and we'll go over that in the next lesson. I'm at 10 minutes and 42 seconds. We will let go for the lesson today. Appreciate it, guys.